everyone, this is Kathleen Caniel and I'm going to share to you the Nicator Americanus. So this is the overview of this parasite. It belongs to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Nematoda, the class is Renenti, the order is Trungalida, the family Ancelostomatidae. It is the genus of Nicator and then the species is Nicator Americanus. So, Nicator Americanus is a gastrointestinal parasite in human. They are hematophagus hookworm which means they are the blood feeders of the nematode world. As the name suggests, they have hooks in their mouth that help them attach better to the intestines of their host. So we have two kinds of hookworms, the Nicator Americanus as the New World Hookworm and then the Ancocylostoma dudinil as the Old World Hookworm. But we're gonna focus in Nicator Americanus only. So Nicator Americanus is exclusively found in tropical and temperate regions. The eggs require a moist, warm, and shaded environment to hatch. The heat required by the juveniles or larvae to fully mature are from 23 to 30 degrees Celsius. Eggs will gonna die below freezing or soil desiccation or too much dry of the soil. The ideal soil conditions are where the water drains but not too quickly or moist soil. So Nicator Americanus is known as the American murderer because it infected approximately 700 million people around the world. The worm earned its alias because it's commonly found in the soil of the southern United States and South America. So now let's talk all about the characteristics of Nicator Americanus. So it has a vocal capsule in which it is the structure that connects the oral opening of the mouth to the esophagus. This species contains a pair of semilunar cutting plates on the ventral wall. This vocal capsule in which they used is used to attach better to the intestines of their host. So it has a pair of cutting plates in the front and back portion surrounding the front margin of the vocal capsule. This cutting plate is responsible for the cuttings of the intestinal wall to cause bleeding. Its size is small and slender. It bends in the opposite direction as the body curvature. It has no posterior spine. It has a copulatory borsa which used by males for grasping the female during mating. And it has a cylindrical body and a cuticle with three main outer layers as its appearance, which is made of collagen and other compounds secreted by the epidermis. So it also has reproductive organs for the reproduction of bit uh, reproduction in the intestines of the host. So the the size of the females are 9 to 13 micrometer long with egg filled uterus, while the male hookworms it is 7 to 11 micrometer long with posterior end forms a bell shaped borsa. So it's the egg are the eggs are oval with an empty space between the shell and content, 60 by 40 nanometer. It's a thin egg shell, then colorless and transparent. It contains four to each cell and embryonated, and then the immature eggs pass in phases are approximately 20,000 eggs per day. So sexual maturity reach at the final molt. Egg production in females occurs five weeks or more after the female matures. Mating occurs in the intestine of the hosts which are humans. Males are required to find females and inject their sperm into the females. Then females may produce a pheromone to attract males. So the male calls around a female with his curved area over the female genital pore. So now let's talk all about the life cycle of this Nicator Americanus. So, there are actually three factors involved to complete the life cycle of this parasite. These are the intestine of the host, the feces of the host, and then the soil for its development. So, this worm starts out as an unembryonated egg that passes through the feces of the host. After one to two days, under favorable conditions, the eggs become embryonated and hatch. This first larvae composed of stage 1 and 2 known as rhabditiform larvae. So these are the free living larvae. Then it molds to become filariform larvae. It takes 5 to 10 days for a rhabditiform larvae to become a filariform larvae. This is the infective stage which can able to penetrate the host skin. So when it penetrated to the human skin, it traveled to the blood vessels and heart and reached the lungs. Once there, it varies through the pulmonary alveoli and travels up to the trachea. When it is swallowed and carried out to the small intestine, there it attaches to the intestinal wall and matures into adults and begins reproduction. Adults live in the lumen of the intestinal wall where they cause blood loss to the host. Then the eggs produced by the adults end up on soil after leaving the body through the host feces. So female hookworms produce up to 30,000 eggs per day. In terms of the mode of transmission, the infective larvae or the filariform larvae develop from eggs, excreted and feces and penetrate the skin, usually by the dorsum of the bare feet or between the toes. Vertical transmission from mother to child is also possible. So what are the, dis what are the disease caused by Nicator Americanus? 
So, nicotoriasis is a term used to refer to a parasitic helminthiasis infectious disease that involves infection of the small intestine of humans caused by the nicotor americanus. It causes um, abdominal pain, diarrhea, cramps, weight loss, and anemia to the host. And also, cutaneous larval migrants is one of the disease caused by this parasite. There are juveniles that being trapped in the host skin. So, because of this, it um, it resulted to a skin eruption or skin infection called cutaneous larval migrants. So actually, there are three phases of disease sa kinin ko sa Nicator Americanus. Moto siya katong cutaneous phase where invading larvae may cause dermatitis or skin infection. Then, pulmonary phase where migrating larvae may cause pneumonitis and intestinal phase where adult worms may cause anemia. So, sa infected larvae, penetrate the skin and invade blood vessels in the dermis causing ground age. So, the next phase of disease occurs when larvae undergo pulmonary migration. Having been carried to the lungs where they break out air species or alveoli causing focal hemorrhages and allergic pneumonia. So, once worms reach the small intestines, it causes um, intestinal phase disease. When they attach the mucosa by ingesting a tissue plug into their mouths and feeding on blood, Nicator Americanus can consume 0.03 ml blood per day. So, blood loss from the host may result in a profound iron deficiency anemia and hypoprotein anemia. Symptoms of this parasite Nutrition and blood loss, major contributors to sickness, effects from the interaction between host and parasite. The severity of disease is directly related to the number of worms in the host body. Each worm is capable of ingesting 0.03 ml of blood per day. When small amounts of worms have infected a host, the patient will asymptomatic. Once infectious reach 25 to 100 worms, the patient will experience slight symptoms such as fatigue, slight weight loss, possible headaches. So, there are actually two manifestations of this um, parasite, the pulmonary manifestations, which includes the symptoms of cough, chest pain, pharyngeal irritation, wheezing, fever result by severe infection, and then the GIT manifestation or the gastrointestinal tract, so epigastric pain, indigestion, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, and flatulence, or the farting. The treatments of Nicator Americanus is the antalmentic drugs. These are the benzimidazoles, specifically albendazole and mebendazole. These drugs rid the body of the parasitic worms in the um, intestine of the host, in the body of the host. So to prevent the infection of this disease, uh, of this parasite, do not walk barefoot in non-infected areas. Do not use raw sewage as fertilizer in agriculture. Do not defecate in open but rather in toilets and school-based mass deworming is very important. And then public health education is um, essential so that students will have the knowledge how to um, improve the sanitation. And lastly, sanitation is the very important. So thank you and keep safe.